First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. All right. Can you hear me now? All right. Here we go. All right. We're going to go into the true meaning of Christmas and the real origin of Kwanzaa. I um, apologize for the technical difficulties. I'm glad that you're hanging in there with us. Um, what we're going to get into is the origin of the word Christmas. When we get into Christmas, it's real simple. Um, the word Christ stems from the ancient Kemetic or Tamarian or what is known as Tamarian word, Kares. The word Kares, according to Gerald Massey's, if you get his book in particular, Gerald Massey Lectures, or his other book, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, he specifically speaks about the word Kares means the mummified body of Osar, and is mummified because it's wrapped in bandages, just like the physical body is. Well, the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland, so therefore, the soul is wrapped around by the bandage known as the pineal, which is the throne of God or the seat of the Lamb. That's what the soul symbolizes. Now, Kuras being that it's tied to Osar, that symbology is that Osar is the sleeping God, the one who needs to be resurrected. Some refer to him as the dead God, because he was cut up into 14 pieces, and one piece in which that was not found was his phallus, in which that the head of the penis is known as the penal, the P-E-N-I-L-E, which happens to be the same sound and also reminiscence to the pineal. All right? And it's a known fact that when the pineal becomes engulfed in blood, it can swell up to the size of a dime from the size of a grain of rice or the size of a split pea, hence the term pea brain. But when it becomes engulfing, it can swell up to the size of a dime. It used to be the size of a quarter. Some even state that it was the size of a silver dollar. And it set more up towards the top of the head. And this is where the word pain, kneel, stemming from, 
the Latin word pinus or pine, as in pine tree, comes from. It looks like a pine cone, and hence the pine tree was known as the everlasting tree because it was evergreen. Hence the evergreen fern tree is used during Christmas time, symbolic to the resurrection of the phallus or the activation of the pine meal gland, whichever direction was that you take it in. Hence the symbol of a saw. All right? That's why the star is put on top of the tree, symbolic to the brightest star in the sky, night sky or shadow time, known as Sirius A, which sits directly down from the three stars in Orion's belt. Orion um, is a Greco-Roman word in which that is derived from the word Uranus, in which that means heaven. So when they say the man up there, or the man in the sky, or whatever term in which that is used, referring to God, they are talking about um, God in the heavens. They're talking about the Orion constellation. It is there in which that um, that the origin of life, as far as galactically, um, stems for us. At least this is what is told to us by the Amazulus, told to us by the Dogon, told to us by the Egyptians or the Tamaranes or the Tanesis, um, also uh, referred to as the Tassetians or the ancient Kushites. This is all within the particular doctrines, even spread it throughout um, through West Africa, um, amongst the Yoruba, the Akan, the Ifa. All right, even within Vudan, on across into the Americas through the Omex, who's known as the Sheep People. This has already been told. So let's not get spooked out about galactical travel and all of that. That's just an aspect of what is referred to as metaphysics or the Hakka, which are the teachings of Tahuti. That's all it is, just an aspect. However, the spookism part coming at not being able to explain your own earthly existence. That's the spookism. So, when it comes to these certain words, you have to be able to break them down. So the word Christ means Kares, the mummified body of Osiris or Osar, in which that is symbolic to the soul sleeping within a pineal gland in which that must be awakened by the Kundalini, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, which is all set, Mary. And Mary becomes awakened through certain positions and rocking of the body, yoga, qigong, tai chi, rakat within Islam, and many different other postures. Within yoga is known as the sun salutation techniques or methods or positions along with various mutras. These positions are called sutras. Within Islam they're known as rakats. Now the word salat within Islam means fire and is, is a direct, blatant word to mean as Kutalini. So when you're performing salat even within Islam and you making those seven postures, those are symbolic or sim similarity. These have similarities too with the sun salutation yoga techniques or positions or postures. And so therefore, by the moving of the lower back area, it awakens the Kundalini from its half sleep state to become more active and travel up through the various chakras known as the seals. And when they reach the last seal of the prophets, hence the title Muhammad, that's what this is all symbolic to, which is the crown chakra. So hence it says within 
the Nation of Gods and Earth, the Five Percentage Teachings of the Justice Lesson. Why must Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil? And his talks about in there that you will receive free access to see Brother Muhammad in the city in the holy city of Mecca. That holy city of Mecca is talking about that seven chakra, the king dome. All right, the dome of the head, the Godhead. That's what that is referring to. So when you break down the word Kares, it's talking about, in essence, awakening the sleeping giant known as Osar. All right, that's what is the Bible, um, in a sense, speaks about the Nephilims. When it speaks about the giants roam the land, it's talking about your genius, mental giants, actually. Not just giants on which that once did walk the planet Earth that stood 36 feet tall. Or 25 feet tall. Or 18 feet tall. Or 12 feet tall or 9 feet tall. Or 7 feet tall as some still do today. Of course that was back over 30, um, 30, um, 65 million years ago. During the time of the dinosaurs, because we have been on this planet, at least according to forbidden archaeology, um, 2.8 billion years. Billion, not million. So, that is the science of the word Christ. Now, when you get the word mess, the word mess is derived from the word miss, M E S which is a mental netta, or what is known as the hieroglyphics, or what is also referred to as uh, ancient Tamarian word. The word mess is short for messenger or messiah. All right? Um, you might have seen the hieroglyphics or mental netta in which that you have Tahuti on one side and Heru on the other side and an individual standing in the center and the fat of the crocodile is being poured over top of the head and is making a shape like around the auric fill of the individual, which stands about three feet out from um, for the average person. But they are being anointed as a messiah. So even a person who becomes a messenger or messiah, the anointing comes from the crocodile fat of, of the netter called Sebek, who symbolizes that crocodile. That's what that is. That's why you see Heru, um, or Heru, um, the babe, hence Jesus the babe, standing on top of the crocodile, symbolic to that particular um, anointing. That crocodile is also symbolic to um, an aspect of the soul in which that um, the crocodile fat is talking about the excretions or the precursors to the melanin, which is actually the soul principle in which that is based on carbon and it's forever changing. This is why they can't get a hand on it specifically. But they utilize the precursors, which is melatonin and serotonin. The reason why they can't get a hook on melanin itself is because it has its own genetic structure and it changes. Especially when looked under a microscope. So it can never become defined. It's forever changing. So the melatonin and serotonin in which that is excreted from the pineal gland um, is utilized. Um, melatonin is utilized I'm in the body between the hours of 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning, and serotonin is utilized from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. And so mess symbolizes um, the excretion of these particular chemicals, and one chemical in particular called DMT, all right, um, dimethylene, um, for the short terminology, um, um, thyromine, um, which basically deals with a chemical which that is excreted 
normally, as is stated, is known as the um, DMT molecule, or what is known as the molecule of life, is also um, another name is um, the Anpu or Anubis molecule. But this molecule is supposedly only produced on the time of birth and during the time of death. But we know through heavy meditations, through bringing in more prana or chi or ki energy, you can also activate and stimulate the process known as the DMT. All right? While you're living and not having to wait till death. So, mess symbolizes being able to produce that particular chemical. And, of course, there's certain herbs that you can utilize in order to help with that production. The herbs is ginseng, guadacola, ginkgo balaba. Um, there's also mushrooms, which that can be used. Um, one in particular grows within the dung of cows um, and is red and white. And um, also the Tabernathi Ibuga plant from West Africa, in which that after drinking just a cup, they say is 70 times more potent than marijuana. And just from drinking one cup can actually produce out-of-body experiences or astral travel and projection. So there's several things in which that can be utilized to make these, um, to make you become a mess or messiah or messenger. In other words, the messages or the reason why you might be called a messenger or mess is because you are actually carrying communication from the spiritual world to the earthly plane. So therefore, that's actually what that is symbolic to. So during this time period, we know that the sun is the lowest in the sky. And Jupiter is more prevalent during this time period. And Jupiter within um, astrology is known as the planet of gifts and benevolence. And the sun being the closest to us during this time period in the sky. And being at its lowest point, that lowest point is known as the tomb or the womb. So, three days and three nights, the sun stands still. That's why it's known as the winter solstice. The word solstice means the day the sun stands still or the day of standing. So, the sun is still within that position for three days and three nights. Hence, symbolically, dead in the tomb or in the sepulchre. Just like it says of Jesus within your Bible. Or as it is stated within Heru, within the ancient comedic or Tamaran text, known as Bahem Heru, also referred to the evolution and the rise of Ra. Hence, actually, is where the Holy Bible comes from. The word holy stems from the word Helios or Halo or Heru, which is Heru, and the word Bible from the word Papyrus or Biblios, I should say, and then Papyrus, and then Papyrus. So, Heru's paper. Heru papers. That's what the Bible is. It's Heru's papers, or the raw Papyrus. The books of Ra, or the books of Heru. That's what is told by utilizing the word Holy Bible. But, of course, people get caught up within the Latin and don't take it further back. Of course, we will have to do that with all of the languages, being that we have the oldest and the highest civilization, at least documented, uh, we are found there on the Giza Plateau. Not that there are not other pyramids. Of course, we know there are hundreds and thousands of pyramids and mounds around the world. Um, however, um, the writing on the wall, or what is written in stone, as they would say, the handwriting is on the walls, um, as, the, as the biblical Bible states. Um, and so, therefore, we can utilize that as far as a language or dialect, 
as well as also symbology, representation, and the fact that the hieroglyphics or Metuneta has various levels of modes or schemes or patterns dealing from mor morality to spirituality or esoteric teachings in astrology. So there's many levels to this information. It's not just one. But people get caught up within that, and they begin to start focusing, and therefore they become linear thinkers, and they believe that they have the truth, when actually the principles are supposed to be holistic. We're supposed to tie all of this information together. And it doesn't matter if it happened here in the Americas or if it happened in Africa. Because those are land masses. We're talking about the people we actually derive from. They derive from the people minds, from their archetypes, their mental archetypes. And the oldest people on the face of the planet is known as the Twa people, who was the first to enter into Egypt, and who actually built the pyramids along with their children, the Nubians or Kushites, which is now Ethiopians. And so, um, this was built all over the world. People took the pyramids. As we know, these mounds. So we are the builders or the great architecture, um, architects of the planet. So hence the word mess once again, meaning as also master builder. So when you are... So when you actually deal with Chris Mess, you talk about the resurrection of the soul and you connecting with your higher self and with that higher connection, you're actually being able to pull down information from the Akashic records, which are hence the messages in which that we need to to put the pieces of the puzzle together and you as that messenger, you pass this information on to others. Uh, within the new age is known as channeling. But we see that um, some channels are not always accurate. Also, there's a such thing as the monad in which that can tap into the oversoul, which is actually your personal oversoul, in which that is a collection of your past lives. Now, you have access to that oversoul or to those particular Akashic records or that universal library of your particular past lives, and that is located in your medulla amagata, which is at the back of the head. And the Qigong um, masters, Tibetan masters, and etc., the monks, whether it's from yoga to Tibet to Buddhist to Taoists, they would tap at the back of the head in order to score that particular area known as the medulla amagata. And by doing so, they develop photographic memory as well as also access to their personal Akashic records. This is why um, in people who have split personalities, they can actually learn a language or have a language in which that they never was taught. A person speaking Russian but never um, been to Russia, you know, or whatever the case is because... That information is also tied in through the DNA, which actually are your collective ancestors, and which that you are a concentration of on seven generations on your father's side and seven generations on your mother's side. So when we're dealing with Christmas, you're talking about something in which that goes deeper than just the um, little aspect of just a tree and the lights on the tree. The lights on the tree symbolizes the stars up in the sky. As we said, um, the stars put on the top because it symbolizes the star Sirius as in Sirius A, the sun behind our sun, as it is known as. As a matter of fact, right now there's two suns in the sky from a lot of reports, and that second sun is um, actually Sirius C, which is called Emiya. And also, um, they claim that it is also Betelgeuse um, from the Orion constellation in which that has exploded or uh, became a supernova. And they say that this um, energy will be with us for quite some time. But if you go to the occult teachings of the Theosophical Society, the Anthroposophical Society, the Rosicrucians, they speak about a sun behind the sun. That is even mentioned within 
Masonry or Freemasonry. This son behind the song, like I said, is actually Sirius C, Emiya, which is Zachariah Ascension, referred to it as the planet of the cross, and known as Nibiru. But you have Nibiru actually put inside of you. If you go to Nutricize by Africa, um, by Layla Africa, all right, Imhotep, on page 15, numeral, Roman numeral XV, you will see the brain blown up to the equivalent size of a car. And over top of the pineal gland is a galaxy-like cloud that actually looks like a UFO. And this is in your brain. And what happens is that when that Kutalini energy comes up and it awakens or soar, it beams up into that particular galaxy-like cloud in which that is the eye of Heru. So now the soul has awoken and has risen or resurrected at that 90-degree perpendicular level. It is no more plagued and no longer plagued by the three ruffians. In which that symbolizes lust, greed, and jealousy or hatred. Or symbolic also to the three lower chakras, the three ruffians. But then other tells it the 72 thieves. Right, seven and two equals nine. And of course, three. Um, times three equals nine, so it goes back to three again. So all of this is talking about that same thing. All right, so um, also that correlates to the seven two degrees within the zodiac, um, in between the five points, in which that makes up 360 degrees. Hence the zodiac itself, the great year. I wish that we are now moving into, and of course, this particular year is special because of the Mayan calendar, actually known as the Omec or She calendar, in which that is um, the Omecs actually are the Dogon people, the Mandis or the Mandingo people, which is actually part of the family line of the Dogon, and the Dogon are the astrologers of ancient Egypt in which that they left Egypt or Tamare around 8,000 years ago or 6,000 B.C. because they knew of the coming prophecies of the invasion to the planet. And so they left, and along with them, their knowledge of that priesthood. And so that information came here to, to the Americas in which that the Omecs have been here for at least, according to scientists, 5,000 years. Of course, we know that they've been here longer because we have documentation of the fossils being in Arizona 75,000 years ago, the um, Washington being in the Americas over 100,000 years ago, the Twa people being here in the Western Hemisphere 2 million years ago, and the books you can get for that is um, actually um, The Children of Mu by James Churchward. And according to Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Creedmoor, hum humanoids or human beings have been here within the Western Hemisphere 600 million years ago, before the continental drift, which occurred, according to scientists, 200 million years ago. So man did walk, indeed, with the dinosaur, if the dinosaurs existed at all. I'll let you go and do research on that. But based on what we've been told, the dinosaurs did not disappear until 65,000 years ago based on meteorite showers coming in in which that caused um, dust to form um, around um, particular portions of the planet in which that drove um, the people underneath waterfalls and down into the earth in order to survive with the destruction of the dinosaurs. This is at least what is said. And you can get that information from um, many scientific, you know, many scientists' reports. You can read the Scientific American magazine. Um, you can actually read the information within your high school um, books and which that you had within geo um, um, geography. It is all in there or either in college in anthropology class, they speak about it, 
with the so-called evolution of man. So all of this information, um, it ties back to um, the actual signs of Christmas. And like we said, the sun is at its lowest point, And nine months later, it's born again within the month of September, which is Virgo, in which that is the Virgin. So hence Mary, the Virgin. So every nine months, it is born again. And of course, nine symbolizes completion. So this is what all of this actually represents in that regard. All right? So uh, when we're talking about the winter solstice, that's the reason for the fascination around December the 25th is because that's the day in which that the sun begins its journey back to ascend back into the sky. This is symbolic to, of course, in the Bible it says Jesus ascended um, to the right-hand side of his Father in heaven. This is talking about the sun um, rising to um, its apex once again as it's on its journey from December to spring, what is known as the Passover, to the summer. So from winter to spring to summer. Um, and the summer, of course, it reaches apex. All right? And that's around the month of June, around June 23rd. So, therefore, um, we're looking at the resurrection of the sun, the sun up in the sky, which is known as the Son of God, because the sun is the physical manifestation of God. It's not God itself, all right? But it symbolizes the aspect of the solar principle in which that is symbolic to the soul of Ra within you, which is embedded inside of your pineal gland, in which that awaits for his bride to resurrect him to a 90-degree perpendicular level to become Heru or the Christ or Caress. The soul actually from outside of the mummified wraps known as the pineal gland. So this is what all this is actually talking about. We've been duped into thinking that it's just talking about a fat white man coming down your chimney or coming through your window to steal your cookies and your milk and leave you some gifts in return or stuff your little stockings. This is what we, you know, um, have thought. You know, Santa himself symbolizes Satan in regard of astrological events known as Saturn, the planet, the black planet. All right? Now, there's many characters dealing with Santa. Um, we know um, so-called um, Santa Claus um, actually was, based on all accounts, a more actually. And you can go do your research on that. But outside of that, it was dealing with astrological events. Of course, Saturn symbolizes the planet in which that influenced the structure of the human body, in particular, the most dense portion of your body known as your bone structure, 206 bones. This is where the story of Enoch comes from uh, when you read the book of Enoch, and it speaks about specifically 200 fallen angels who were on the planet Saturn before they came to the planet Earth. And ten was there prior, and ten of the fallen angels was there prior to the two hundred fallen angels, and which that is known as a third of heaven leaving with Iblis within the um, within Al Islam, within the Holy Quran. All right, but you get the book of Enoch. Um, it speaks about specifically um, Azazel. All right, so approximately two hundred and ten. Angels, fallen angels, a third of heaven was cast out. And that's symbolic to actually the most dense portion of your body, about 206 to 210 bones, um, as they would say, is what formed your skeleton system. And Saturn happens astrologically to be the influence over that. It is also the influence over your DNA, as well as also your blood. All right? 
Now, that's what Santa symbolizes. Satan also, or Satan, or Santa, being that it's red, um, in this regard, Santa or Satan, being that it's red, it symbolizes the lower nature, or in particular, the lowest chakra, which is red. In which that, that lowest chakra, it, which is the slowest spectrum of light in the visible spectrum, is what actually formed your physical body into existence. Okay? So, you can't be mad at Santa, you know? Because even the ancients believed that the body was the temple of God. And for God to know itself, it had to form something physical, tangible, so that it can be relayed back to the intangible or the invisible. And so the whole reason why you are here in the physical is to actually spiritualize the matter, the flesh, the body. In other words, to have to quicken it. And there's no better time now to quicken based on the fact of the dark matter coming in into this atmosphere based on the galactic alignment in which that has occurred or is occurring. Y'all, if y'all had telescopes or if y'all was actually paying attention to the sky, y'all would see that particular planets was aligning. Saturn was one of those planets. Mars, Mercury, the Earth, Jupiter. And it was aligning with the sun along with um, the Pleiades or Alcyon, the central or galactical sun, which is thousands of times larger than our sun. So, this is actually what took place this particular Christmas. All right? Something much deeper than just buying gifts for your children or receiving or eating or sitting down and eating a turkey meal, you know, with cranberry sauce and all the stuffing and collard greens, you know. It went a little bit deeper than that this time around. So um, that is dealing with the true origin of Christmas, you know. And when you go and look at the connections in which that it has astrologically, they are mistaken. If you go look at the ancient Egyptian philosophy, and a good book for that is Egyptian Yoga, Volume 1 and 2 by Dr. Muwata Ashby. Okay? So you'll definitely need to go check that out. All right, so I'm going to go to the phone lines before I come back in order to break down the second part, the real origin of Kwanzaa, because we're going to get more into conspiracy theories. But um, let me go to 757, area code 757, you're on the line. Peace, fam. Peace. How you doing, man? Doing good, God. I'm glad to hear you. I'm glad to hear that you were speaking about doing some channeling earlier. Right. Well, I did some channeling before the show, and it woke me up and uh, pretty much told me to call. No, oh, right. One on the line. Right. And uh, I was told to introduce myself as Sola Moon. All right. And uh, I'm plug, trying to plug into the network and communicate with the brothers. I'm here in Virginia. Trying to put Virginia on the map. All right. So we're going to try to take this thing and do what we got to do. I also, it was interesting you just talked about the uh, when they uh, misinterpreted the interpretation of uh, the December 25th thing. Right. It's interesting that everything that you've been talking about, I've been channeling for the last little bit of time. And I resurrected at the same time that all this shit was going on. Right. Every last bit of it. Got you. Got you. 
Got you. All right, y'all, y'all heard that. Take that into consideration because um, there is a science to channeling, and we are the best um, at doing it. Um, it's known as becoming a medium, whether it's for things in the past, present, or future. We can see all timelines. So um, you must activate and awaken your pineal gland in order to give you access. That's why it's known as the all C and I or the all, or the C and all I is because it can see into all of the particular um, past, present, and future, all the timelines. So um, it must be activated in order to do what the brother is talking about. Thanks, I. All right. So let's go to... Every code three one four. Every code three one four. You're on the line. Uh, Peace. Yeah, this is brother Patricia Hill, out of Missouri Republic. Yes, Green sir, Hill. Was, yes, sir. But I'm fine. My brother, how are you? Doing well. Doing well. All right. All right. Yes, sir. But I was listening to the uh, uh, what you were saying about the cranberry sauce and the dressing and turkey. You said that was how was that related to Christmas? You were saying. Nah, well, you know, the turkey itself was um, something in which that symbolized the Turks um, in that regard and carving up the Turks. In other words, the land of the Turks, in which that the original Turks, according to J. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume 1, um, as well as also what they never told you in history class, the original Turks were, um, you know, the so-called blacks, in which that came from out of Africa, um, in particular from Ethiopia, as they came uh, from um, the um, Saudi Arabian Peninsula or the Hajjah. Um, high um, um, high jazz um, peninsula um, on across into um, Turkey. Um, so when you go and do your research, you'll find that out. Um, and of course, as a matter of fact, there's a song in which that you can listen to. It's known as um, the I think it's called the Threat. It's by Ras a uh, Raskas, um, brother Raskas, and um, Nature of a Threat. That was the name of it. Nature of a threat. So when you go and um, check that out, um, you will see, you know, that's what that was actually symbolic to. You know, we're talking about symbology. We're not talking about actuality. When we're talking about symbology, we're looking at the way in which that the word turkey itself, whether it's from um, the area now known as Turkey or whether it's the bird in which that is known as Turkey, you know, these words have origins, and the root to both words is the word Turk, you know. Okay. Right. So, you know, so this is where that comes from. And also, when you're talking about Jesus, you know, because, you know, Christians would, you know, love to throw Jesus up into that particular um, scenario. But Jesus um, actually is symbolic to all saw. You know, which is um, which within his uh, um, resurrected state is Heru. Uh-huh. Now, when you go and do your research on Jesus, you will find that Jesus supposedly was made by the um, Nicene um, Council by Constantine, who actually took over the area known as Turkey, um, where Turkey is now, and it was known as um, now known as the capital or the city of Istanbul. Right. Um, he know he named it after himself, called Constantinople. You know, and you will find that with him bringing the 319 bishops, and one of the bishops was excommunicated, who was known as Arian. Um, there was 318 bishops, and these bishops decided on a made creature. Now you can get this, um, get several books on that. One in particular is by the historical origin of Christianity by Walter Williams, Professor Walter Williams, you know, in particular. Um, you can get another one called What They Never Told You in History Class by Endo Kemet Kush, mm-hmm. in which that speaks about it. All right? So when we're talking about um, Jesus, it has its ancient comedic roots. As a matter of fact, when you look at Jesus in Aramaic, which is Old Hebrew, the name means Yahshua. And Yahshua, all right, means he who saves, or the Lord of salvation. 
Okay. But when you go back to ancient Egypt, the derivative of Yahshua is actually the first begotten son, or the only begotten son of Atum, by the name of Shu, which is the netter, or the personification of air. This is why Jesus is known as, within the book of John, as the word made flesh. Or within the Old Testament, the breath of life. But God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. He's talking about the breath itself. So Jesus actually symbolizes the breath, in which that the breath is what actually composes or holds the physical composition of the human body together. Insulation and exhalation. In other words, centrifugal and centrifugal force. Push and pull, yin and yang, male and female. These particular polarities is what holds the physical body together, the physical structure together. This is why at birth, you what? Inhale mm-hmm. when you're smacked on the behind by the doctor. Mm-hmm. In death, you exhale because there's a release. So inhale, there's a drawing in. Exhale, there's a release. Wow, push okay. and pull. You know, the pull and push factor, I should say. So this is what holds the physical composition together. You know? So this is what people don't understand. And, of course, when you go to um, the Bible in the book of um, Job, it speaks about these particular constellations. Orion is one of them. But the South Chamber is actually is the um, star constellation Sirius, or Sirius A, B, C, you know, um, some say there's a D. Um, C was just found in 1995. And like we said, now it's passing um, near um, our solar system. I wish that it only passes through here every 3,600 years. So we have a lot of phenomena on which that is taking place right now. You know, but, you know, back to the Jesus thing. So this is actually um, the real meaning of Jesus in that regard. It don't have nothing to do with a personification of one man or a man who came 2,000 years ago, in particular, not a white man, you know, or the drawing in which that we, um, or the painting in which that we've been um, used to, right. you know, which is actually was a painting drawn by Leonardo da Vinci from a contest in which he beat out Michelangelo to um, actually paint Cesar Bonnier, who's the son of the Pope, you know, um, who's the son of the Pope. Um, I think Alexander, you know, so, you know, this this is what people don't don't realize, you know, there's a lot, a lot when it comes to breaking this information down, you know, and it goes outside of the emotions, you know, it has nothing to do right. with, the, um, with the emotions whatsoever, this has to do with facts, you know, mm-hmm. factology, you know, the study of facts, right, you know, so. Um, this is just, you know, the real science behind all of this and, you know, what is really um, going on. You know, of course, there's more. You know, I can't give everything, right. you know, within right. um, two hours. But I try right. to get as much, you know, as I possibly can in so right. they can go back and do their own research and see how true what I'm saying, you know, everything is. Right. You know, and so when people find out, you know, come back to me and tell me. Right. You know, that's what, you know, hundreds and thousands of other people have done over the 20 years in which that I've been um, teaching on this information. Right. You know, because before we had the um, Internet, you know, became, you know, before it became popular in, in, in the household, you know, name, you know, we had to read hundreds and thousands of books. Definitely. You know, that's how I ended up getting, that's how I um, got my information from the age of nine, you know, to... You know, 19, uh, you know, till I was around almost 30 years old. Right, yeah, right. You know, yeah, you know, when I was almost 30 years old. So from age of 9 to 30, I had to read hundreds and thousands of books. I didn't get this information from just off the Internet, you know. Huh. And that's, you know, that's some of the problem right there, is that a lot of people depend on um, just the Internet research, you know, go and read the books. Because the books, you know, give up more details than what you're getting on the Internet. You might get um, a sentence or a phrase or a paragraph, you know. And sometimes you can get PDFs with the whole books, and that's good, too, you know. But there's a good website that you can go to called the Knights of Imhotep. 
you know, www.knightsofimhotep, that's K-N-I-G-H-T-S, mm-hmm. of Imhotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, <coughs> dot com. And that's an excellent website to go to. Okay. Right, there was no <laughs> internet um, um, before 1992, um, as far as um, in the um, colleges or in schools. Um, I mean, there was computers, but it was no internet. You know, that did not become a household thing until around 1998. You right. Know, so this is what people don't understand, you know, that anyone who was prior to that, you know, had to read, you know, to get this information, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of books, you know. So um, when people go and do their research, you know, they'll find out what's true or not. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I can mm-hmm. say about it. Right. You know, and so what we're going to do, um, you can stay on, brother, and um, you can join me. I'm going to get into the Kwanzaa information. Okay. Um, hopefully I answered um, most of the questions about the Christmas thing. If not, um, hit me up in the chat room or hit me up online. I'm here, and um, if you want me to go more in depth about the Christmas thing, you know, or whatever the case is, you know, yeah, hit me I up. I was talking to a brother, Yada. We were talking about, the, it was about, actually, most people don't know, is about the, about the Son. You right. You know, they about the, about the Son. It's the Savior. Well, the Son is the giver it. of light. So just like Jesus is said to be the giver or the light of the world. You know, that's what that is symbolic to. The light, actually, if you go to Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 22nd verse, and I don't like being religious because I'm not, but I'm metaphysical, so I utilize scriptures in order to help convey um, the teachings or the haka, which are the teachings of Tahuti. Okay. So we can get back in tune or in line with his consort, a consort, which is um, consort, which is um, actually mayat, so we can get back in balance. But... In Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 22nd verse, it says, If the eye be single, the whole body will be filled with light. The eye be single. The one eye be single. So that is either the Greek um, or the Minoan um, Greek symbol of Cyclops, which is the one-eyed uh, monster, or it's actually symbolic to your one eye, which is your third eye, which sits in the center between your two eyes and your brain, in which the scientists have actually done the research and study and it actually is an eye. Okay. But yeah. around this eye, it has over 144. It has 144,000 lenses, or what is known as sand-like particles, crystal-like particles, which are magnetic, which that sits around it. <coughs> yeah, we're talking so about. So when you energy. go to your Bible, and it speaks about the 144,000, uh-huh. and it speaks about the 24 elders around the throne of God, you know, and the throne of God, and on this throne is known as the lamb, the lamb is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland itself. And the 24 elders are the 12 pair of cranial nerves that sits around the pineal gland in a circle, just like King Arthur and his 12 knights, just like Jesus and his 12 disciples, just like the sun and his 12 zodiac signs, along with his 12 planets or objects uh, within the solar system. Right. You know, so this is actually what this is actually, you know, this is what this really means. You know, people don't realize the symbology and how much, you know, this in depth, how much this is, you know, goes into, you know, because they are so linear. They only use in 10% of their brain. They can't see the holistic value in this. No. You know, and because of that, they can't connect the pieces. You know, connecting the pieces come through heavy meditation. Mm -hmm. Connecting the pieces come through you working what's called Qigong, Tai Chi, because you're bringing in more energy. The more energy you bring in and being able to store within your body, the more keys and puzzles that you're able to break through when it comes to the nonsense upon planet Earth because you'll be able to pierce through the veil of the illusion. You'll be able to pierce through the matrix. The matrix will no longer, will no longer have you. And yes. this is what this really means. You know, yes. so... You know, did, did just you, think about it. You remove the sun. I mean, what do you have? Right. I, we were thinking that the. It also right. had uh, why a lot of people were going at it uh, during this season because it, it deals with a lot of what the energy of the sun has an effect on the population. Do you agree right. with that? Or? And see, like I said, 
is a known um, fact within um, astronomy that the sun is the closest to the planet Earth during this time period, during the winter solstice. But the reason why it don't give off um, all the heat that it needs to during the winter solstice is because it is tilted. Or I should say the planet is tilted at 23.5 degrees and it wobbles on its axis. Uh -huh. So it gives us the illusion of various seasons, in particular four seasons, known as summer, winter, spring, and fall, or autumn. Okay. You know, and of course, you know, those four seasons is based on the four sons of Heru within the ancient comedic or Tamarain or, you know, um, Egyptian text, or the Pehem Heru suit. Um, it is also based on the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire, in which that when they combine makes ether. You know, so all of this is, you know, is symbolic to all of this. It's also based on the four amino acids in which that forms the physical body, known as the building blocks of life. All right. You know, so, you know, we're not playing with this information. You know, people think this shit is a joke, but you're talking about your soul here. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what, that's what we do know, you know. Um, we do know that. You know, we know within all the monotheistic belief systems, the soul is what is really being talked about, you know. And if the soul inhibits the physical body, the soul then must be God because it says that God dwells within the temple in which that he made. He don't dwell in a temple made by man's hands. So he do not dwell in a temple or a mosque or a synagogue or a church. He dwells in his temple the physical mm -hmm. body, the human body, the human anatomy, the human structure. You know? Yes, so this is what people are um, um, continuously mistaken, so therefore they have a tendency of worshiping something outside of themselves. So when they get down on their knees and pray, whether they're Christian, Muslim, or Jew, they have a tendency of thinking God is something outside of themselves that they can never get to. So they're always in search of it. So they never find themselves, nor their soul, nor their God. Oh, okay. Because it's only when they find that God that they will realize that God is within. It is at that point when you have found when you have found God. Because when you found God and know that God is within, then you know that everything else without is an illusion. Right. And that's what is shown within the movie Matrix. Right, it sure does. You know, so um let me get into um, this information here about the Kwanzaa because, um, you know, a lot of people know about, you know, about how it was created, you know, some 40 years ago. You know, um, actually in Southern California, uh, Ron um, Everett, you know, also assumed name is Milana Karanga or Ron Karanga, you know, right. or Dr. Milana Karanga. Mm -hmm. um, he was the founder of United Slaves or what is called us, or US. And they was a um they was a rival to the Black Panthers. And truthfully I think they was duped into becoming FBI informants or doing um activities under the FBI. Yes, I was told that. I I I have uh followed that and uh, uh people have been telling me about Ron Karinga supposedly to be an agent himself. Right. Well, that's the reason because it is said that he's an FBI informant or agent um, based on many of the reports in which that have come back, me being a former writer for the magazine um, Frontline, uh -huh. in which that the editor is um, Marcus Klein. He's no longer doing it, but you can still get back issues from him. But he specifically states that Mulana Karanga was an FBI agent uh, or informant, you know, because when you look at it, the few, you know, between both rivals, between the Black Panthers and the United Slaves, or us, that was few by the FBI in a sense, because Karana, um, um, Mulana Karanga's group, um, United Slaves, shot to death, you know, Black Panthers, um, Al Bunchy Carter. Huh. Deputy um, Minister um, John Huggins on the U on on the UCLA campus. Huh. I didn't know, you know about that. 
Yeah, yeah. John Jerome Huggins was only twenty three, and Al um, Prentice Bunchy Carter was only was twenty six. Man. And it actually, and it actually, had happened. It said after the meeting of the two Panthers, um, they was met in the hallway by two brothers who was members of the um, U.S. Um, um, the guy named was George P. and um, Larry Joseph um, Steiner. And Steiner pulled out the pistol and shot um, the two Panthers dead. Wow. Yeah. And um, Kalana, um, um, Milana Karanga, known as um. Ron Everett, you know, he went to jail. You know? I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear that part. I sure have it. Yeah, that's that's his, yeah, that's what happened. So they you they're know? doing the devil's work for him. Right. So you know, they they was a um group. You know, us. You know, uh, United Slaves. You know, they was a um so called um fascist group in which that walked around with dashikis on. You know, and they adopted um African names. You know, you know from like Swahili. You know, as a matter of fact, Ron Everett or Milana Karenga, you know, and Milana, you know, means master teacher within Swahili. But he was born on a poultry farm in Maryland. You know, and he was the fourteenth child of a um Baptist minister. You know, and he came. You know, he went to um California in the late nineteen fifties. And attended Los Angeles Community College, and um, he moved on to um, UCLA, where he got a master's degree in political science and African studies. Mm-hmm. And um, by the um, mid 1960s, he had established himself as a leader of, um, of what is known as a cultural nationalist, mm-hmm. and that is a term in which that um, has some meaning in the 1960s. And that was actually a way of distinguishing Kalana Karanka's group or followers from the Black Panthers, who was, you know. You know who the you know the Black Panthers. You know they they follow the Marx or Marx. You know call Marx or the Marxist teaching. Right. You know what happens is actually uh, we know how the Illuminati does. They fund both organizations. That's what they've always done. Had them war against each other. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, and so. You know, and how, and how the shoot, you know, the shooting took place, like we said, of um, our apprentice, um, Bunchy Carter and um, John Jerome Huggins, was because um, they supposedly had this Milana Karenka. And so the guys came back, George P. and um, Larry um, Joseph um, Steiner came back in order to, um, you know, to get at them. Huh. You know, and so that's how that, you know, all took place. You know, so there's a, there's a lot of things going on. So, you know, of course, being that, Karan, you know, Milana Karanga is chiefly, you know, the so-called inventor of Kwanzaa, you know, a um, so-called African holiday in which, they, you know, he put together in 1966. Um, you know, all of that is based on, you know, the workings, you know, of what they call Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, of course, means first fruit within Swahili. And um, it's celebrated, of course, through now December the 26th um, through um, January the 1st. And it competes with Christmas and Hanukkah, you know, you know, actually while incorporating some of the echoes of both, gift giving and, um, you know, um, ceremonies built around a seven-hold um, candle holder, you know, that, you know, within Judaism, you know, it's called the seven branches of um, menorah. Yeah, when I first heard about uh, Kwanzaa, I actually thought it was a really organic to the Af- you know, the African tradition when I first heard of it. And then when I later, later found out to uh, study and investigation, found out that it wasn't. You know, right. it was something well, that uh, Karina I mean, had made up. We know that there's no <laughs> fruit, you know, there's no first fruit, you know, or fruit so much that is grown within the winter time. You know, um, you know the holiday, you know, known as Kwanzaa, you know, came from the Swahili phrase uh, "Mutuna ya Kwanzaa," which means first fruit. But traditionally, Africans have um, have celebrated the first fruit um, or the first harvest, you know, of the year. But it's not during the winter time. Right. Okay. You know, so 
you know, he used it as a political move, you know, actually, you know, you know, to upsert um, Christmas, you know, and so forth and so on, to give, you know, black something of their own as compared to, you know, white Christmas of us looking at, you know, Santa Claus coming down the chimney and tree and, you know, and um, like I said, you know, the sh- stuff your stockings and all that good stuff and drink your um, drink your milk and eat your cookies. <laughs> you know, so the, so the seven symbols of Kwanzaa, of course, you know, you have a straw placement, you have a um, candle holder, you know, um, three red, three green, and one black candle, and which that, of course, is symbolic, too, the red, black, and green, the colors of nationalism, the colors of Marcus Garvey's flag, um, the colors of actually on the walls of ancient Kemet, which that symbolizes the resurrection or life. Um, you have the um, fruit coin, and of course coin, I don't know why coin is used, because coin actually, um, maize, as we refer to it as, actually comes from the Americas, um, it was not known within Africa, so um, that is one of, that is another problem with that, but of course gifts and a communal um, unity um, cap, you know, of course, you know, um, maybe those who study the Kwanzaa thing and they actually have you know, um, their, you know, celebrations, they normally have it between now and um, January the 1st, of course. So with these symbols, um, Kwanzaa, you know, observers consider it um, Guso Samba, which are the seven principles of the holiday, unity, self-determination, collective work, responsibility, um, cooperative economics, purpose, creative, and faith, which these are good purpose, you know, these are good principles. You know, I, I'm not dissing that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm questioning, you know, the motive behind it in a sense because of the affiliation and because of some historical um, things, you know, such as the FBI involvement within us, um, the death of the Black Panther, of um, two of the Black Panthers specifically, and there's more, you know, that I can go into, but this is at least the two that you can definitely go and do research on. Mm-hmm. But of course, the first day, December the twenty sixth, is Umoja or Unity. So that was yesterday. Today is um, um is um the second day, which is self determination or Chakaku Aliyah. Um, the third day is um um Ujima, collective work and responsibility, which is tomorrow, um, December the fourth. I mean, December um the fourth day, December the twenty ninth, is Ujima. Cooperative economics. December the thirtieth is Nia purpose. December the thirty first is Kumba creativity, and January the first is Imani faith. So um, these are some good um, sciences, you know. So we can definitely deal with that, and I think that's the reason why a lot of people have dealt with it is because of the principles and because of know, the good science behind it as far as that is concerned. You know, but when you read about the origin of Kwanzaa being the first harvest celebration of Africa, you know, which is allegedly, you know, a record in African history as far back as ancient Egypt and um, Nubia, but there's no explanation of why any ancient Egyptian or Nubian might have helped, I guess, a harvest festival around the time of doing the solstice. Okay. And there is no identification of the crops that they harvest. You know, okay. like I said, the Karenga's formula for celebrating Kwanzaa requires the use of two ears of maize, a coin. And but maize is a new world plant. It was not known in um at all in ancient Africa. Okay. You know? So you know, that is, you know, some of the problems once again, you know, with that. You know, so um if there's any questions concerning anything which I've said so far, um, check me out. You know, we got another caller here. Hold on, brother. Okay. Area code 314. Area code 314. You're on the line. Yes, Bianchi. How you doing? All right. Peace. Now, you know, you was mentioning about the, I hear this argument about Kwanzaa all the time, about what it is and what it is, but uh, a group of people have a right to, Draw up an occasion and no refer doubt. to your occasion and celebrate it in any manner that, by which they wish, wow. <laughs> especially when they do it voluntarily. 
right. in opposition here in, in Western society. Many of the things that we celebrate was brought upon because of some force introduction. You know, if you go to Brazil, you there in that culture, and that culture has already some established procedures and principles that uh, you either participate in or you don't, but you don't ridicule. And right. you sure don't try to tear it down. So uh, Kwanzaa is, uh, is well worth the effort and the idea. But, you know, you talk about historical, when you apply seven days, as I mentioned in the chat room, when they started applying seven days to celebration, that's very recent because in Nile Valley society, they had ten-day calendars right. during that time. And uh, people don't, you know, don't think. I had to do the traveling in order to connect all these pieces you mentioned before that you studied out of books. That was the only way we had. There wasn't no such thing called no internet back in those days. Exactly. Cell phones. Right. Hey, they didn't even have no word processors. Exactly. I remember the first word processor. Right. We were still using typewriters. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, you know, another point, too, uh, and when you start going around these people, I just came back from the bush over there in the Ashanti region in Ghana. And you start seeing people still are using many of these sayings, many of these uh, uh uh-huhs and so on today. that We read about I think that was only associated with a a, a particular literature book that they called the Day Bibles and so on and so on. But that that story about Adam and Eve, about the the tree, that comes from the acacia tree, which is... (coughs) Well known in Nile Valley and along the Nile River, where its fruits and leaves have medicinal properties, right. and you can even go into the temple of Isis and you can see Shishak <coughs> feeding the Sudan, the king sitting on the throne. And she's feeding him from the acacia tree, mm-hmm. giving him life. That's right. The funny thing about that tree, whenever it's taken and try to be, try to transplant it to other areas of the world. It's fruit and leaves are toxic. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, it's a lot to learn. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. And I appreciate what you've been saying. I never met you before, but you know, I like to give credence to people who are saying things that are very accurate. Oh, you know, like the zodiac sign. Those, those, right. All those constellations, these. The formation of those shapes today is not the same as it was back during the time of the people who actually came up with those ideas. Right. And the names, when we talk about Virgo, we talk about Taurus, right. Right. Aquarius, that ain't what those things was called. No, they weren't. I'm going to get into that in a second. Yeah. yeah. All right, I ain't going to cut off your show. I'm just wanting to throw that in there, man. My time clock is, is messed up all that traveling I just got back last night But uh, oh, Appreciate you brother I appreciate you coming on And sharing that wisdom with us though Yes sir Alright And like the brother was talking about um, Let's look at it um, Like he said um, Those were not the names But we know like for example What we have within the Greek Terminology for these particular signs um, Aries actually is um, Amen Amen um, symbol actually was a ram um, And so therefore um, Aries is a ram So therefore that's the connection We also have um, Apis You know In which that is the bull You know Which is Taurus You know Apis is known as the bull of all saw You know So You know you have Amen Apis And then You know Gemini of course is you know, all saw and all set, but it becomes all saw and set, or hero and set, based on the battle in which that took place between them. No, but originally it was male and female, which is all saw and all set, but it became two males based on the Greeks' patriarchal, you know, society structure, as well as also their demeaning of the female aspect, you know, wow. because they practice homosexuality. Wow. You know, and that's also where the symbol of the cross, 
you know, even though the course was seen in other cultures, but it became predominant within the Greek culture in which that the Greco Romans took it within um the patriarchal structure known as the Vatican in which that it became the symbol for Jesus Christ. But the um the cross symbolizes actually two phalluses or two penises, you know. Um, the adult penis and the child penis as it meets, you know, in the center. And was that actually with the symbol of homosexuality in that regard, right. um, based on um, the linear aspects of the Greeks, not understanding that the four points actually symbolize um, within our culture um, the four seasons, the four elements, the four sons of Heru, um, also symbolic to um the cardinal points, the mutable points, and the fixable points of the zodiac, or Mother Zodiacus, or what is known as um, Mesoroth, um, within um, Al Islam, you know, which is actually one of the chapters um, named in the Holy Quran, which means the, um, you know, we're talking about the group, or the gathering of the stars, or the constellations. So, you know. This is where, you know, this information comes from. So we got, you know, Aries is Atum, is Amen, excuse me. Um, the bull, which is Taurus, is Apis. Apis, Gemini okay. is, um, you know, like I said, also an Oset, you know, originally, but then it became um, Heru and Set based on the battle in which they had. So that's how it became within the Greek culture, the two males. And then, of course, you have cancer, which actually is Kepara, which actually is the dung beetle. Is it what now? The Kepara, which is the dung beetle. That is actually Capricorn. I mean, I'm not Capricorn, but I'm Cancer. Okay. All right? Um, which is, you know, of course, Cancer is a crab, but in its original, just like the brother was talking about, originally, um, if you go to, this now, we get all this information from the Temple Wars of Dendera, or Head Heru. If you go to Het Heru or Temple of Hawthor, at the top of the um, ceiling, you'll see um, the zodiacal um, constellations known as the um, Dendera. And it is there where you'll find all these images or symbols of what I'm talking about. Like I said, Cancer originally was not a crab. It was the dung beetle known as Kepara, all right, in which that the dung beetle would actually roll up a ball of dirt in which that when it's being pushed, it looks like the sun is being traveled across the sky, but it's on the ground. So people equated that to Kepara, to the sun, or a form of Ra, all right, um, or the moving force of Ra, all right, or what moved Ra through the sky. Um, you know, in other words, there was a back and power to the movement um, of that appearance of the sun moving. Of course, we're moving at the same time. As the sun is moving, and as a matter of fact, this corkscrew um, actually is not, you know, just rotation or circular. It's actually like a corkscrew um, way of of, um, of us actually <coughs> rotating through the solar system um, around um, the sun, and the sun and our solar system around the um, twelve zodiac signs plus one more, um, in which that actually we'll get into that in a second. So then, of course, we have Leo, in which that is Atum. Atum symbol is a lion. Um, Leo is a lion. So this is how we know who is who based on the symbols, you know. Um, then, of course, you have um, Virgo. Virgo is the virgin, in which that um, correlates to um, um, Orset, which is Mary, you know, her name. Or said Mary, M E R I. Mary, of course, becomes Mary, the mother of God or Jesus within the Bible, and she was a virgin. So that actually symbolizes Virgo or or set Mary. Then, of course, um, Libra is um, the scales of balance. And, of course, within ancient comedic teachings, that is Mayat. She also had the scales of balance. You know. So so uh, actually uh <clears throat> Virgo Vir- Right, uh, Virgo mm-hmm. is Virgo is all set. Right, Virgo is all set Mary, right. Okay. And of course Mary becomes the mother Mary within the Bible. Right. You know, of God, you know. 
And remember, the ninth month is um, September, which is Virgo, in which that the sun, like we said, goes back into Virgo um, the nine months in order to become reborn from the virgin, which is the sun, Heru, becoming reborn within the womb um, of Arset Mary, his mother. Okay, this is where you get the black Madonna and child from, you know, um, within the statues and the portraits um, around the world. Around in, oh, in 200 countries, you'll find the black Madonna child um, statuettes or pictures, paintings. All right. Then you have Scorpio, which is um, the symbol of the scorpion, but you also have Sarket. Sarket symbol is a Scorpio. Or scorpion. All right. Seker is what is known as the Scorpion King. This is what the movie's Scorpion King was based on. Is Seker. Zeket is the feminine aspect of Seker. Um, and this symbol was a scorpion. And of course, Scorpio has three symbols. Actually, has a scorpion, a snake, and an eagle. Hmm. Okay. But there was also about the Seker um, or Seket. All right. All then, right. of course, you have um, in between Sagittarius and Scorpio now, in which that's coming to play is Imhotep, which is called Officius, which is the 13th zodiac sign now. But that is um, Officius. Officius is known as the, res- um, the serpent wrestler, symbolic to the Kundalini energy, in which that is the symbol of healing, or the Caduceus, or the Uraeus, um, or the um, Washet. Um, Know, in which that was developed by um, Imhotep and now becomes a symbol on all of the medical hospitals um, around, you know, around the country um, and possibly around the world. You know, that symbol symbolizes the medical profession of healing, you know, hence doctors or Sanu within the ancient comedic tongue. Mm-hmm. I meant to not to Sanu, all right, doctors, healer. And, of course, um, you have Sagittarius in which that is um, um, Shu, um, the symbol for Sagittarius, of course, is half, you know, um, you know, half animal and half man, but that actually is symbolic to um, Shu. Um, Shu um, is the personification of air, and it's Shu in which that host the physical structure of animal and man together. So Shu becomes that particular symbol. Um, or derivative of ancient comedic philosophy or Temerian philosophy. And, of course, then you have um, Capricorn. And Capricorn is, um, once again, um, it's a goat, but the goat was known as the goat of Mendez, within, um, ancient Kemet. And so the Mendez um, symbol is also a goat, as such, as such as Capricorn is also a goat, the symbology. All right, and then of course you have Aquarius. Aquarius um, is the head of a man, is man, and with an ancient Kemet, um, that was also a form of Heru. Heru represents the age in which that we are now going into. This is what also this particular winter solstice symbolized is us going into the age of Heru, from out of the age of Pisces, in which that is the last one. And Pisces is the fish, and the fish within um, ancient comedic time um, was actually was the crocodile, which is called Sebek. So these are actually the 12 names of the um, 12 zodiac signs and the original symbology or images in which that was utilized by the ancient Egyptians or Temeranes or Kemetans or Kamau. So this is what we need to um, be teaching. Right, right. All right. So, um, and brother, um, Piyanki, um, got some other information there too. He got that Virgo is niece, that Libra is also um Hero Maku, or Ho Maku. Um, Scorpio was. Also, or Set Sarket, or Sarek. Um, yep, Sagittarius was Shu, um, as I stated, but he also has Entefnu. And Heru of the two is Capricorn, the goat headed, 
and Minette became um, Aquarius. And he says, oops, and Heru of the two crocodiles is now Pisces. So he added some more information there. Um, so um, this is actually, you know, what is going on. You know, and we have to get back to this, you know, because um, like the brother said, the comedic calendar had 10 days um, of the week and actually was more accurate than um, any calendars in which that we have today, um, you know. And, of course, this is where the Omec Mayan calendar actually derived from. It's from that lineage of the Dogons. And, like I said, the Dogons were the astrologers in ancient Kemet, and they left from out of Egypt around 8,000 years ago, mm-hmm. you know. So, mm-hmm. Right, and he also, oh, Brother Pianchi also said that that's why our signs don't work. We are using someone else's stuff. Well, exactly, you know. Right. So this is right. the point of us getting back into our own information so that everything can work for us because, as we know, you know, we honor your mother and father, your days will be long upon the land. Right. So um, these are just some of the keys, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so the what we said that the Washita. Uh, nation was here 100,000 years ago, right? Right, over 100,000 years ago. Over 100,000 yes. years ago. So they know about the maize then. Yes. The, right. How to right. grow maize. Right. Or talk to European how to grow maize. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Okay. Because well, they was they were seen as the Native Americans. Exactly. They were seen as the Native, as the real or the original Native Americans. You know, um, the Native Americans, which they show us, which are the Indians, didn't come, you know, until um, the 4th um, century um, A.D., you know, with the Chinese coming here, you know, um, and mixing in. And also those Orientals or Asians coming down from the um, Bering Strait, you know, from Alaska into North America, you know, or what is now known as Canada down into what is now known as the United States. Right. Right. So that's when the that's how the mixing but that happened mostly within the western territories. If you um get the um the southern, the eastern and the northern um portions near the Great Lakes, all of those people, um all the Native American were dark skinned people. None unlike um the Ethiopians. In other words they was Kushites. Right. Mhm. Huh. Okay. And um, this is why you can get a magazine called the Nexus Magazine, in which that specifically speaks about um, Hakeem Bey talked about it, that how the blacks ruled the South during the time of the Civil War. You said the magazine called the Nexus. Right, it's called Nexus, N-E-X-U-S, Nexus Magazine. It was in the oh, is that something you order? Yeah, you can order the magazine. You can actually pull it up online. But this was okay. an issue from the 1990s. In which okay. that Hakeem Bay spoke about, in which that in the issue, which I had the issue some years ago, um, but in the issue it spoke about um, how um, the blacks ruled the South. Okay. Mm hmm. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm learning something new. <laughs> right. I'm learning something new. Learning some new knowledge here, uh, especially about the, uh, the zodiac being of Greek origin. The names, anyway, right. being a the Greek origin. That, right, the names that we use now is Greek, but it comes or is derived from the ancient Egyptian symbology. Like I said, on the temple walls of the um, of temple of Het Heru, or what is known as the Temple of Hathor, uh, where the uh, where this, um, the images of the Dendera, um, you can look up and you'll see the zodiac played out there, and those images is actually uh, where we get this information from. The uh, uh, yeah, um, I have to get a uh, literature on that uh, on that zodiac. Right, that, a that's why. Lot, and right, right a that's why a lot of us not working for us. Right, there's a good book in which that you can get in which that helps explain it. Um, it's called the now um, the now Valley Contribution to Civilization by Anthony T. Broder. Okay. The now, right, the now Valley Contribution to Civilization by Anthony T. Broder. And it had that in there. Yep, it had that in there. Okay, I remember that, because I'm familiar with Anthony Broder. Right. Exactly. Wow. So, mm-hmm. So check that out. Um, that information is up in there. 
Yep, also Pianke put within the chat room that in Second Kings 19.35, it talks about the Assyrian um, being defeated by the angel of the Lord, and the battle was won by the Cushites, led by um, Septu, um, um, Sepku of the 25th dynasty. Okay. All right, so not necessarily the angel of the Lord, but um, yes, the angel of the Lord, who was actually um, um, Sebatku. Um, which was um, the Kushite um, leader of the 25th dynasty. And um, even Pianchi, which the brother name who was just on, actually is mentioned in the Bible too, um, you know, as being, um, is also mentioned in the scriptures. You know, so coming from around that same time period, you know, the 25th dynasty. So this is what people don't understand is that the scriptures actually are um, a summary of our Ancient philosophy coming from the book of Pehem Heru, which um, anyone would tell you that is the truth. If you go and um, read um, Wallace E. Butch, Wallace Butch's books, um, E.A. Wallace Butch's books, he'll tell you within his books um, that um, that the Bible itself is derived from um, the Pehem Heru text. Um, Dr. Ben Yakin, and within his um, Black Man um, um, of the Now. Um, he has it in that book. He also has it within the um, Western um, origin of um, African religion. Um, he has it within that book, Dr. Ben does, as well as also within another book, We the Black Jews. So um, you'll see it in there. As well as also um, you'll see um, the information within the Egyptian yoga, but like I said, by Dr. Martha Ashby. is within the Nile Valley Contribution by Anthony T. Broder. It's within Man, God, and Civilization by um, John G. Jackson, you know. So um, the information is there. It's there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, got, I got that book. I haven't uh, read it yet about Which Man, one? God, and Civilization. Yeah, yeah. Pick that up. That that gets into it. Also, the um, World 16 Crucified Saviors by um, Kersey Graves. He speaks about December the 25th and how many of these particular deities um, within these particular religions or prophets are actually um, based on, their birthdays are actually based on the 25th day of December. You know, so not just Jesus, but Buddha, um, 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 Zoaster, Heru, uh, Mithra, you know, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, this is what at least is said as far as their research and study. Like I said, you read the 16 Crucified Saviors. People say that um, that um, some of that information is inaccurate. However, um, we're not talking about, you know, um, the literal aspect. We're talking about the symbology. What is the stories? When you read these particular stories, how do these stories relate? And what are the, you know, if you do a comparative religious study, how do these stories relate to each other? You know, do it sound like this familiarity within these stories? Like, for example, I'll give you a good example. Um, in the Egyptian story of the two brothers, um, it speaks about um, also within um, the story of the two brothers, it is directly connected to the story of Joseph mm-hmm. in the Bible. You know, the story of Imhotep, you know, in which that the story of the two brothers um, possibly was talking about um, Imhotep and um, the king um, at the time was King um, Zoser, you know, and Imhotep was his um, prime visor or his prime minister who was right next in line to um, the king. And it is stated that um, that one of the king's wives came on to Imhotep, and Imhotep turned her down. Well, that same story is told within your Bible in the book of um, um, in the Old Testament about um, Joseph. Who becomes the next in command, the prime visor next um, to the um, pharaoh of Egypt, you know, and whose wife comes on to him, you know, and he denies her. So it's the exact same story is being told over and over again, you know, thousands of years apart. Because this was during the, you know, um, Imhotep and Zoser was during the third dynasty, right? You know, of um of um ancient Egypt, the order um or the dynastic period. Well, I don't see how some people can say a lot of it is inaccurate. Right. Uh, when proof is in the pudding right there. Right, 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 right. How right. accurate it actually is. Right, right. 
you know, so uh, 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 the same as the, the I can give you many, right, I can give you plenty of more examples. I'll give you one more example. Um, oh, but go ahead, finish up about the Kwanzaa thing. Yeah, the Kwanzaa, uh, mm-hmm. as brother said earlier, about uh, the people have the right to uh, create, you know, uh, uh, make up what they want, make up whatever. And that's mm-hmm. true. That's so true, you know. But uh, my thing is, is the validity of it. Right. That's what I have a problem with, you know. And especially when you, uh, you said earlier, uh, Malala Karinga used it as a political move. Right. And people were duped, and which they were. Well, uh, right, right. Well, the thing was is that if we wouldn't, you know, you know, the thing is that a lot of information is now coming out, has been out concerning um, the whole thing. And, you know, like we were saying, the principles themselves are good principles. We should, you know, rally behind those particular principles, self-determination, unity, creativity. I mean, these are some, um, you know, these, these, you know, fall up under, you know, the laws of my yacht, you know, with the, um, you know, cardinal virtues. Right. You know, I mean, right. so we should, we should, you know, definitely take a hold of that and um, promote that, you know. Right. But, you know, we also need to invoke, you know, um, beyond the two maize or two coins, you know, um, which that symbolizes life, you know what I'm saying, or fruit, you know, like we said, we should also become more, I guess you can say, even though it's a non-religious thing, but when we doing the celebration, actually, is turned into a religion in a sense. Right. If you, if you get, if you understand what I'm saying. Right. You know, so you know, it has to be. You know, at these celebrations, it just have to be clear on you know on what we're doing, that we put forth the energy for the you know for the um year to come. You know, as we go into the spring, which is three months later, you know, um, you know, when we begin to start growing our crops again, um, so that we can harvest them, you know, um, six months later, you know, um, in September, you know, during that time period, you know, of Virgo, you know, when that is actually harvest time for us here, you know, within um, America, you know, or within the United States. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so... You know, it just have to. You know, we if it was broken down, you know, in those particular, you know, in that particular regard, then, you know, it sh- you know it shouldn't be a problem. Right. Okay. You know, but um, also um, um, sister um, Oz, she wrote that um, check the book out on the sidereal um, calendar by the Dogon Ascended Master, um, Brother Naba. La Mosa Say so check that out Okay Just Sister Roz No Oz oh, Sister Oz I call it Sister Oz Oh okay um, So Jam Moss um, Oz But I just say Sister Oz But um, She said check the book out On the um, Sidero Um um, calendar by the Dogon and the Master um, Naba Lamosa. Okay. Mhm. So the Silical Calendar. That's I guess that's the name. The Silical Cal. Um, the right. Silical Calendar. Mhm. All right. We'll do. All right. Yes, sir. So uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, so you, you you what you're saying is. That we should just discount Kwanzaa altogether like that. No, we should still uh, hold it. Right, as an, still right. as an authentic. Right. Uh, well, I mean, it's authentic as we make it, but I think there's some things in which that we need to explain about it, concerning it, and um, you know, instead of just going, you know, along with it and just doing it as if um, it's just another, re- you know, religion or, or or actually part of the culture. Right. Yeah, I, th- I think that has to be developed more, you know. So that's what I'm saying. That has to be developed more um, for if we can have clarity concerning the reason um, behind it and also explaining the images and the symbology behind it. 
you know, and not, you know, just masking it, but actually getting down to the bottom of it. You know, okay. um, you know, like I said, you know, the two ears of corn. <laughs> you know, um, like I said, that is a fruit from North America, not, you know, from Africa. You know, and of course, the Egyptians would have known about it because there are temples, 18 temples, as a matter of fact, within the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Right. You know, um, in which that has been found, hieroglyphics or the metoneta of Ra, Osiris, um, which is um, Osar, Isis, which is Oset, and many other um, netters are mentioned on those particular walls. So Egypt in Africa was the throne, but um, they colonized the whole planet, you know, because you will find pyramids and mounds throughout the whole planet. And these things was designed and structured by the same people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. In which that, of course, if you read Herodotus, um, it specifically states um, within his teachings that Egypt or the Egyptians was a colony of the Ethiopians. Right, I heard that, right. You know, right. So the Ethiopians were the Kushites. So these are Kushitic people. I wish they had gone through the world and built these particular pyramids and mounds. <coughs> okay. Okay. And also, um, Brother Pianchi um, asked the question. He said, right now in China, it is 4.47 p.m. Thursday afternoon. Um, if Jesus was born on December the 25th, then whose 25th was it? <laughs> In other words, um, <laughs> you see, so if you put a day on it, then um, that can be disputed as being, okay, well, it's the 26th for us in China. You know, it's the 25th for y'all, but it's the 26th for us. Uh-huh. You know, and it's not the year um, 2012, is the year 2013. Because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they one year um, ahead of us. <laughs> okay. You know? Hmm. You know, so it's, it's a lot of things to that. You know, that's that's why we just can't, you know, sit aside and, you know, let someone control our consciousness. We have right. to and start controlling our own consciousness and asking questions. I mean, this right. is the time Going back to that zodiac sign. Right, that's the time that we're in, is the age of Aquarius, which is the age of Heru. We're in the age of truth, in the age of knowing. And so now being in the age of knowing, we have to ask questions in order to find out our true destiny and the sole purpose. You know, if you're just going to allow for somebody else to dictate to us um, what it is, then, I mean, we'll fall short every time. And um, actually, to me, anyone else controlling your mentality is detrimental to you as the um, user or as the bearer of that mind <laughs> You know Because the mind As they say Is a terrible thing To waste <laughs> Right <laughs> Alright mm-hmm. No doubt about it Right 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 Alright Yes sir so, You know That uh, uh, Like uh, <clears throat> You said you and, uh, Somebody else's thoughts Somebody else's uh, Spirituality and, uh, like John, John Henry Clark said, that uh, we be, we can become a slave to someone else's spirituality, right? To their own, you know. to somebody else's philosophy, to someone else's um, psychology, sociology, folk ways, more ways. So we are all jacked up, right? Man, mm. still got a lot of work and studying to do. Oh well, it's all right. We all do. We all do. But the next, the, this, 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 this study the, the, the query called the Haru Age. Then, right. This is the age of Haru. Exactly. So that that kind of eradicates a lot of the, your Christianity. Then. Yeah. Well, that's what is meant by the um, Jesus return, because remember, Jesus is actually was a derivative from Haru, and if we're in the age of Haru now. Then this is the age of Jesus' return. This is the 2,000-year return of Jesus, as the Christians was looking for. As, as the Christians would say, the second coming. Right, this is the second coming. Exactly. Okay. The, the true second coming. <laughs> right, because remember, Jesus, when he came supposedly 2,000 years ago, symbol was a fish. Well, who symbol is a fish in the zodiac? That is Pisces. Right. And this is why the fish is seen twice uh, when you go and see Peter and Andrew 
And he told Peter and Andrew, um, within the book of Matthew, to cast down your nets, and I'm going to teach you how to become fishermen of men. Okay. You know, so wow. Peter and Andrew symbolize each one a fish apiece. And so to cast down your nets, become fishermen of men, it symbolize um, those two fishes, which is the age of Pisces, the beginning of the age of Pisces. This is why you go to um, Jesus when he was speaking with the disciples, and the disciples of Jackson, well, what be, what will befall us in the last days? And you got, I think you can find this in, um, oh, man, what book is it? I think it's in the book of Mark. I think it's the book of Mark. I can't remember, but in one of the books, it's, um, Jesus is asked by the disciples about um, what would befall us in the last days. And he said, um, in the last days, you will um, know the time because you will be able to follow the man into his house. And it's a man who has a pitcher of water. You okay. Know? Right. So, who is the man who has a pitcher of water? Right. Pitcher of water. Right. Who has the pitcher of water? That is who? That is um, Aquarius. Right. Aquarius. Right. Aquarius has the pitcher of water. So why is this image given in the, in the Bible? So that shows uh, the European scholars that wrote that Bible. Uh, they know pretty much about. Uh, the zodiac and a lot of the comedic science as well. Right. Right, but that information is not revealed unless you go through those various schools, such as um, Freemasonry, such as the Rosicrucian or the um, Theosophical Society or any of these particular so-called secret societies. You will not get this information. Right. You're right about that. You know, so therefore... You know, this is the reason for the um, for the difference. Matter of fact, it's in um, Luke twenty two ten. Anyone can go to Luke twenty two ten, and it says, "As you enter the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water in his hands, follow him into his house." Now, there's twelve houses on the zodiac, as they say. Wow, they're telling you right there. And they're telling you to follow the man with the pitcher of water into his house. Into his house, the house of right. Aquarius. The house of Aquarius. Thank you from. And that is the second coming. So hence the age of Heru, which Jesus is symbolic to Heru. Uh, uh, uh. So go, go to Luke twenty two ten, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. I, I, I would definitely will. Right. So, so this is the nonsense in which that's being perpetrated against us. You know, is um, us not knowing who we are. You know, and therefore. So, therefore, they're able to pull the wool over our eye. At least that's what they think. All right, let me go to the phone lines. I got another um, call here. I got okay. Eric 757. Eric 757, you're on the line. Peace, fam. This is uh, Brother Sola Moon again, man. I got disconnected earlier. I got a little too excited and disconnected the line. Okay, brother. <laughs> peace. Peace. Peace, peace. Hey, I was just trying to get some contact information. I ain't trying to tie people up, man, but I'm definitely... Looking forward to building with you, brother. You was the last little missing link to to raising me up. So it's important that I that I build with you. All right. The number is two five two two five seven three five. Hold on one eight. second. All right. Hold one. All right. One more time. Two five two two five seven three five eight eight. Right. Three five eight eight. Three five eight eight. All right, I look forward to speaking with you, brother. I'm not trying to hold nobody else up. I just wanted to get back in and uh, get that little piece from you. All right, brother. Peace. All right, brother. Peace. Peace. I'm going to bring you back on. Got another brother here, Eric Cole 117. Eric Cole 117, you on the line. This is another sister. Peace, oh, God. sister. Peace. 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 Peace, sister. Peace, everybody. I just want to just make sure we do our announcements. We have a new website, which I'm so excited about. It's com. We do a daily blog. Also, Aileen breaks down so many wonderful things in there. Also, too, family, if you're looking to get your credit back because your mom used it when you were infant or or you or most like most of us, allowed a friend to use it when we were in high school or college, and it's not where you want it to be, you can get a second SCN number. You can also find that information out on the website as well. So just wanted to just highlight some of the things. Aleem really goes in um, 
connecting pieces. So um, if you haven't gotten your cruise information, if you haven't gotten your ticket for the cruise, you have until March the 20th, don't wait till the last minute. We are definitely going um, to see the Omecan Pyramids during the best time of year, March the 21st through the 25th. So please, again, go to our website. It's DrAlimElbay.com. And great show, God. Thank you, baby. All right. Peace, goddess. Peace, God. Peace. All right. We got Eric Cole 773. Eric Cole 773, you're on the line. Hey, how's it going? Peace. Yeah, I got a quick question um, regarding the pie. Now, uh, I know everybody say the pie is um, like uh, corresponding to the um, like a wing disc, meaning like a uh, state balance with the 3.14, right. and, um, the 13 pieces of Osiris and the 14 pieces of Osiris. Right. Now, now I was uh, doing some research. I was looking inside the maggots. Now, according to the maggots, um, the sun, everything is uh, within and without, you know, so above, so below. Now, the... Um, the sun, the intelligence of the sun, the numerical value of it is uh, one eleven, and the moon, the intelligence of the moon, the numerical value of the moon is uh, thirty three twenty one. Now I was, uh, I was thinking like, okay, now could you could you put it like one eleven, one, and then thirty three twenty one? Could that be like corresponding? You see what I'm saying? Like the balance, so the two polarities. Oh yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Okay. The one eleven being the color of the sun, and then you got the one in the right. middle. And then you got the thirty three twenty one, which is you know the the moon coming to the moon. Right. You getting that information from the Kabbalah? Exactly. Right. 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 Well, you getting it from the numerology from the Kabbalah, then um, definitely, um, because that was Moorish information which that was left in the libraries, um, when the Moors left um Spain and actually parts of Europe. Um, 1492, allegedly they left around that time. I say allegedly because actually never entered, you know, into Europe 1711 AD as they claim. I mean, we actually always been there. But that's the history in which they give us from 711 to 1492. And, of course, during that time, that's when Columbus sailed the ocean blue in order to fool us and actually spy on our un- um, our other empire, which was here within the Americas. Mm. But what you were talking about, that connection is definitely real, you know what I'm saying, um, in which that um, you do more research, you will find out that, of course, there's um, seven phases of the moon, you know, um, you know, and based on the fact of the waning and the, um, and the waxing, it gives you 14, you know what I'm saying, seven phases going up, seven phases coming down, so hence 14, as in 14 pieces of Osiris, and then, of course, the moon, um, has the pull every 28 days on the woman menstrual cycle, in which that the moon also has to pull upon the um, earth, on um, the earthly waters of life. So not only waters of life within the woman, but also waters of life within the man too. You know, because we all are three fourth water, which is an image of the planet Earth itself too. So um, we know that the sun has a miraculous effect upon the planet. You know, um, it grows the. Um, the plants, the grass, the herbs, the weeds, whatever else in which that it grows, our cells it also grow. Um, there's a seasonal affliction disorder in which that if we don't get enough sunlight, we get um, ill and irritable and begin to develop diseases also. You know, right, so, okay. You know, so definitely when you talk about um, these two lights, you're talking about the greater light and the lesser light. That's what it's right. known as. Right. And these two lights together is what actually the, the um, mystery school in Egypt, or what is called the Hakka, um, which is known as the ancient mysteries or the metaphysics, was based on from Tahuti, was based on the greater mysteries and the lesser mysteries, which actually right. was based on these two particular principles. This is why Tahuti is known as the moon god, and Heru is known as the sun god. And these two and these two forces um, actually... Um, when you look on the wall of ancient Egypt, you see Heru on one side and Tahuti on another side. But we, you know, as the humans are being initiated into the ancient mystery school by these two principles. In other words, by the sun and moon or the yin and yang. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. right. So well, definitely. I, I, I was noticing, like, uh, as, a, as I'm becoming more aware, I mean, when I was young, I was, like, about 13, and I was I was passed on this book, uh, The Magic, you ever heard of The Magic, by Francis Barrett. Right. Right, I was passed on that book like about 13 or 14. That's when I started really getting in tune. But I actually noticed I was already in tune. I just had to remember, you know? Right, right. 
and it was like uh, I was with the numeration with the sun, the one eleven. I was noticing like uh, Oprah Winfrey, her satellite channel is one eleven. There's a lot of references and correspondence to the one eleven. Mm. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, far as I was reading uh, Mutwaka Ashby, um, a lightning book, and it's like uh, the symbol for the netters is isn't right. it like like the one eleven? It's like the like one eleven. Right, it look right, exactly. I know what you're talking about. It looked like a flag. Right, right, right. right. And, it, right. and it's three flags, right. And it, so, yeah, exactly. it looks like 111, exactly. I got you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm just, you know, just becoming more aware of different things, you know, as I become more conscious, you know. Oh, yeah, that's be- that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. I appreciate you having my show tonight. I appreciate y'all, brothers. All right, appreciate you too, bro. Thank you for yeah, adding me. All right, All right. Peace, bro. All right, well, we get ready to head out, y'all. Appreciate you, Brother L, for joining us once again, being my co-host. No problem, you know, We get ready to go um, get on up out of here. Appreciate you for listening, and um, we're going to be back at the regular time next week. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.